Hello, peoples. You use K92. Got another match with the Pentagon Jr. Cero Miedo up in this bitch. Versus The Undertaker. Probably gonna just jabbering on about Lucha Underground, which I can do like forever, because Lucha Underground is the greatest shit ever. <laughs> it's New Japan, Lucha Underground, NXT, and then whatever the fuck you call Raw. <laughs> whatever the fuck you call what Vince McMahon does. That, 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 that's down there. That's around there. So continuing on, on people, you know, people I want to see back, people I enjoyed in the Lucha Undergrounds. Again, this is an awesome Pentagon Jr. call. I like it. You know, we're here to sacrifice more souls. We sacrificed the soul of Sting. You know, Supernatural WCW. Now we're here to sacrifice the soul of the big mana taker over here. You know, he, he got through Bray Wyatt. You know, he beat Bray Wyatt every time, but I'm no Bray Wyatt. I'm fucking Pentagon Jr. I keep my promises. I keep my promises. So last time we were talking about how, you know, I think Del Rio did not want to put over all the Yale Pentagon. Uh, another guy I would definitely want to see more of in Season 2 is uh, the guy called Killshot. Um, I kind of wish they could take the mask off him, because, like, he was just, like, just a guy with a mask, but, like, the mask was never explained. I feel like he doesn't need a mask, you know what I mean? The guy is super athletic. I love his whole thing with the gun, with the machine gun. Not Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson, Lucha Underground, goddamn. But like, Kill Shot's pretty cool. One of the people that grew on me. I was not a fan of King Corno when he first debuted. I thought he was alright. And then this fucking guy's wrestling ability won me over. This guy is like he looks like he is beating the shit out of his opponent for real. Like, people say Bret Hart is famous for taking a real, like, beating. Like, it looks like he's actually getting the shit beat out of him. This guy is good for delivering one. Like, this guy looks like he is stiffing the shit out of everybody. Everything he does looks disgusting. Like, this guy is the, like, the shit. I definitely hope they do something to him. Because, like, towards the end of the season one, he became a little bit of, like, a job guy. Like, he kind of kept losing a lot. But he's so fucking athletic. He, like, this guy is a good height. He's well built. His mask looks cool, and it's basically the main mask of the show. Like, the mask that you see, like, on the floor is basically his mask, so. The guy is bananas. He should be way bigger, higher on the card. The guy is believable as shit. If anyone, like, look up any match, look up the match between him and uh, Johnny Mundo. Crazy ass match. Shut the fuck up, Taker. Said oh me though they're chanting. Uh, another guy I like is the Mac, which again, the Mac is a strange case. I know a lot of people love them in the Indies. I did too. But then when you like got to Lucha Underground, I got to see what this guy's really all about. So the Mac is like, you look at him and all you see is a fat guy. Like he's just you know a chubby guy. And this guy can do shiny wizards, high flying, quadruple mega moon salts. He wrestles at a hundred miles per hour. Him and Cage had a fantastic match at the fucking uh, season finale. Like, this guy is so good. It's bananas. It's bananas. So, I definitely want to see more of this guy. Um, the Mac and um, Cage had a cool rivalry. Like, he kept upsetting Cage. And Cage is like, nah, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he... Sling Blade! So, I definitely want to see more of him. Uh, Marty the Moth, uh, the guy from, this is actually the guy I wanted to win the last Tough Enough season, but then the fucking other guy won, the guy who looks like he ate age, I forgot his name, I think it was Adam or something, I don't fucking remember. The guy who was never anything, and there was a guy that called Marty, who was the shit, he was really good, and he was learning fast, but he got injured during the show, so he couldn't continue, and now he showed up on Lucha Underground, and he's Marty the Moth. And this guy's character is already fucking fantastic. He kidnapped fucking uh, Sexy Star at the end of the season. And he has her locked away in this room. And he just keeps laughing at her. And saying how she's gonna like meet his sister. And you're gonna meet my sister. And my sister doesn't like you. And like oh my god. like This guy's character is fucking fantastic. I don't know how WWE did not hire this guy. Like, he's not even been wrestling that long, and he's already fucking got character down. He's bash insane. He is like the murderer version of the whole Johnny Curtis gimmick. 
I love it. I can't wait to see more of him. I hope he's not really a job guy as much. His first match, he fought the fucking champion, uh, Ricochet, Prince Puma. And had a hell of a match. Definitely want to see more of him. Get that choke slam out of here, old man. Get it out. Package pile driver, bitch. And then, of course, our Lucha Underground champion, Mil Moites. What more can I say about this guy? I've been a big fan of him ever since Judas Macias. Ever he had, he had that stint in TNA. This guy's been solid all these years. Uh, he definitely found his stick now. I thought he was awesome with the with the gimmick, but with the vampire gimmick. But this gimmick suits him more. He's a fucking resurrected zombie who like kills. He's basically Solomon Grundy for DC fans out there. He's Solomon Grundy, but he's a lot fucking smarter. <laughs> and he has the lovely, sexual, beautiful Katrina with him. And oh. Oh, I, I could talk about Katrina all day. I could talk about her body all day. <laughs> uh, I was a big fan of Katrina. That's actually one of the people I want to return to WWE. When she was uh, Maxine. Maxine was one of my favorite divas. And I didn't even see that much of her. I just liked her. Like, she knew character. She knew everything. He got jealous. I dropped him with the package pile driver. Now he does his. So, Mil Moit is a lucky guy. <laughs> he gets to come up with Katrina all day. Uh, again, I don't know if Prince Puma is coming back. Like, I, I haven't checked. There are some spoilers for Season 2. I refuse to look at them. I am not looking at that. I'm usually, I usually look at some spoilers. Like, NXT, I look at a couple of them just to make sure, you know, no one returns or anything. SmackDown, of course. You gotta watch the spoilers for SmackDown. But Lucha Underground, no. I will not even look at it. Like, I don't want to know nothing. So, I don't know if Prince Puma's back. He's been killing it in Japan, you know, all that stuff. Hopefully he comes back, but, like, not forever. Oh, here we go. Did you catch me, baby? Uh, another guy that was really in the, also in the same season as Marty the Moth with um, Son of Havoc. He was in the tough enough season, and now this guy found his shtick. He first debuted as a jobber, and then he uh, started out as a heel. Then he, uh, he, uh, he was with Ivelisse. Ivelisse, another person of that season, too. Oh, by the way, Ivelisse. I'll, I'll talk about Ivelisse in a second. She is the shit. So, Sona Havoc found his shtick. He has a cool finish. He has, like, he has an amazing move set. Him and, uh, and Ivelisse are a great couple together. They're hinting that they're going to get back together. Oh, Pompano Soup. They're hinting that they're going to get together again. In uh, season two, so I hope they do. So, uh, I want to see more of Black Lotus. That was um the Asian chick who like never fought a match, but she was big in the story, cause she was the one trying to kill um Daryl Quito's brother. But the Daryl Quito's brother is not a bad guy or something like that. I don't know what's going on, but Black Lotus, you know, I love Asians, so <laughs> I don't mind seeing more of her on my TV. You know what I'm saying? But probably the best diva they have next to Sexy Star is Ivelisse. Ivelisse is my favorite, favorite, favorite woman. Oh, Undertaker. I'm sorry, man. But it's the Pentagon Driver. Get that shit. One, two, three. Cero miedo, old man. So back to talking Ivelisse. Ivelisse is the shit. I wanted her to be the winning girl of season of that Tough Enough season. She had a stint in TNA. She did those one night only pay per views. Ivelisse is amazing. Good storytelling. Amazing moveset. She is so fucking over. And people would probably say, why? She hasn't done anything. That's the point. Like, what little things that she does make her, like, go nuts. So I definitely want to see more Ivelisse. Hopefully they can make a women's title and have her and Sexy Star go at it. Because, like,. I really don't want to see... Like, even when Eva Lee's, when she kept fighting the men, I was like, no! No! Like, I really hope they don't keep that going. I definitely want to see, like, more of Eva Lee's, but, like, they need a women's division. They need an actual women's division. I feel like. Because this whole women fighting the men thing, and, like, I'm not sure, but I think women can't compete for the title. I'm not a big fan, because, like... Why? Ever since just the Pentagon chat, so I'll catch you guys next time. Be when Lucha Underground comes in, best believe that's gonna be my life. Look at this Pentagon driver. Thank you for putting that move in WWE games. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Cero miedo. Talk about having to dig down deep to pick up the win. Hey, this isn't just about going out there and making
making sure everybody's entertained. You've got to win your matches, and that's exactly what happened here. A will to win was 